everybody. I am Karen Lynn Pierce. Welcome to the Sisterhood. Welcome to She is Strong. We are so excited about tonight's show. I am here with a bunch of my friends who are bold enough to come out and share their stories with all of you. Again, I'm Karen, and this show is going to be extra special. As you can see, there's not as many people here as we thought there would be, but that's because God had other plans. But these are the people, and this was on his calendar for tonight. I know the words that these women are going to say and the stories that they're going to share are going to touch your hearts and your souls. I think they're going to have healing. We're going to pray at the end, so hang around for that. But buckle up, Buttercup, because this is going to be quite the show. And I'm excited <laughs> the most because I am not the host of tonight's show. That is the lady to my right, I guess you're left. <laughs> Miss Mammy, Leslie Mimble, is the host of tonight's show. So I'm going to go ahead, turn it over to her, let her read the Bible verse tonight. And then we're just going to dive deep into a subject that, as its name, is going to be about bearing the unbearable. All right, Miss okay. Oh, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it's about widowhood. And, um, oh, I, I forgot to introduce yourself. Let's do that. Okay. Well, I'm Leslie Dibble, <laughs> also known as Mammy. Uh, I'm a widow. Uh, I was married for 39 years. And in November the 15th of this year, it'll be three years since my husband graduated. I'm Jackie Quinn. I was married to my husband, Billy, for 46 years. And he's been deceased for two years, but it seems like every day is a, another hurdle that I miss him. So thank you very much for including me with this group. It's our honor. And I'm Kim Early. Um, I was married to my husband, Jimbo, my high school sweetheart. I'm the big emotional one. <laughs> you know what? That's why I'm going to have yep. to yep. um, It will actually be, would have been 36 years. And um, so a widow is my new identity. It's not any um, club that anybody wants to be in, but it, right. for whatever reason, it's what God has for us. And um, Jim has been gone for um, two and a half years. So. And I am not a widow, but thank goodness. <laughs> I'm not a member yeah. of this club, and, I, and I'm, I want to explain. I'm here because Mamie said I had to be here. <laughs> I was going to not be any part, but they said I, they, they bossed me around. I just do what they say, and to me, that's just the Holy Spirit, whether it's to hold Kim's hand or to right. sit here and listen. Right. That's what I'm here for, and that's what the sisterhood is about. So thank you all for including me in your episode, because this is not mine. This is your stories to tell, and I'm just here to pray, cheer you on, and listen. So maybe take the floor. And while we're doing this, this may not be... It might not be for you, but I am sure out of all the folks that we know and we come in contact with, there's going to be somebody, there's going to be some tips shared tonight with you all. You might want to get a pen and paper because these are not things that we're talking about out of our head. These are things that we've actually done. So, um, that we're living, we live, <laughs> we live it every day, every day. And so, uh, highly recommend like, share, comment, uh, tag somebody, tag somebody because we want to get you up and out. Because we all have to come up before we can get out. I have a scripture here. The reason I'm gonna read it is in Luke four, and I, probably most of you know it. And this is Jesus speaking. It's in the red, and he said, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor." He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I looked up the word bruised, and that means crushed. So probably I know I have fit into this category of brokenhearted. I wanted to be delivered. Every day I get more delivered. Um, so I can see, because that's just covering of the sight to the blind. Because when you first start off on this journey, you uh, you really don't know what to do. The other thing is the bruised part means crushed. And uh, now my heart was crushed. Um, and I didn't know if I was ever 
you know, we talked about Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall and it took everybody to get the pieces back together. Well, my, all my pieces uh, crushed is crushed. And uh, anyhow, that's what this show is, or this episode is about. Uh, we want to share something that will help you because he don't want you to stay down. And I don't know what stage, if, if you are a widow, I don't know what stage you're at. And if we cry, we're just being transparent. That was the purpose of this show. It was generational. And of course, I'm the, I'm the mammy. I'm the oldest. <laughs> um, and they can tell their ages if they want to. I don't know. Karen might make them. But the thing <laughs> is, uh, she makes me do stuff that I can't I can't believe I'm doing it. I can't believe I'm doing this. But that's okay. I'm going, I'm going to say yes. Well, Jesus said you have to. Well, all right. Yeah. There's, you know, whip out the word Jesus. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm going to say yes. You cannot argue that. That's exactly <laughs> right. But anyhow, we welcome you. Uh, the main scripture that I had, and it was given to me uh, before uh, Bruce, Bruce Venable, was my husband. Uh, it was given to me while he was still uh, in intensive care. And uh, he, he died with COVID. I didn't know oh, that. That's how long died as well. Well, anyhow, the scripture is Isaiah, and she gave it to me on a little piece of paper, a little notebook paper, to look this up when I got home from church. And so I still got that in one of my journals because I thought it was priceless that uh, the Lord would send me this message. So I'm going to read it, and you can choose to expand on it if you want to or tell your story or whatever. It says, uh, it starts, it's Isaiah 54, and it's verse 4 starts off. He said, fear not, that was the first thing that hit me, was, oh my God, yeah. I cannot believe this is a bad dream, mm -hmm. a yes. sort of nightmare. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to wake up in the morning, everything's going to be fine. But it, it wasn't. And, and I'm, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, but the purpose of this is to be transparent, to let you know, if you are born again, the Lord will help you. If you're not, we'll help you get born again. Because he right. wants to help you. Amen. He, wants, Amen. he Amen. wants to get you up and out. Yeah. And that's not hard to do. All you got to do is, oh, we've got numbers. We've got any way to get back, right? That's to, right. To see us. Yes, she right. is strong. It says, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shall thou be confounded, which is confusion to me, and I had my battle with confusion, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. And I didn't, when that was first given me, I thought, how in the world am I going to get past uh, widowhood? You know? I didn't know I was going to be doing this. I didn't know I was going to be giving to God. Now, verse 5, it says, For thy maker is your husband. Hmm. Well, okay. The Lord of hosts, I can't expand on that right now. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. And I stop there. So that opens it up. You know, I'm going to yield to you, and then we'll pick up. But like I said, get you a pen and paper, because we got some tips here. We, we have learned some stuff, haven't we? Have. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, you know, this is a journey that I never wanted to go on. I like planning a vacation or a trip where you get so excited and you want to go. It You don't prepare for it. In fact, you don't ever even think that it's mm -hmm. even going to happen. Mm -hmm. I am very blessed, though, because um, I met my husband when I was 19, and we were married when I was 21, so we were together for 48 years and married for 46. Mm -hmm. I have two beautiful, successful children that um, my husband loved dearly. Uh, and I have five grandchildren. And actually, my family is what has um, supported me day to day, helped me through some really strange and different situations. But you know, I don't like to be called a widow. It doesn't describe me. Right. It doesn't, it is not me. I'm unfortunately now without my husband. But a widow 
is, and the connotation of that just sounds so negative. But you know, I found out that it's not always negative. He may put a situation in front of us, but he's gonna lead us through that situation. And there have been times where I've moved forward a step and come back a couple of steps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, have, I uh, this journey is something that um, I've learned a lot of things that I didn't know. I learned everything about a how, plumbing, <laughs> car tires, uh, a camper. You know, I I wasn't that person. I was the person that took care of the bills and spent the money. So now, uh, yeah, I was good at that. So I, some of these things are just foreign to me, and I have even. I'll tell you a situation, and this may very well happen to you. At a flat tire, um, um, I have a little golf cart, and had a flat tire. Well, I didn't know what to do. I needed to use it. And my son says, I got something you can use, Mama, to fix the tire. And it's something you attach to the tire, and it blows it up. And I'm standing there looking at him, <laughs> can't imagine and he says, oh my gosh, you don't know what to do? I said, stop and think about that just a minute. Yeah. I was married to a man who treated me like a princess. Mm -hmm. And I never, never, it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I've never had to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. so now I've had to do oh, I, hard, I can hardly take out the garbage. Uh, well, that's sick. become a, a <laughs> thing. Next <laughs> door, <Jordan. laughs> But it's amazing. It is amazing what it you is can amazing. do. I've you learned can. so many oh, things. Me too. Sorry. Me too. I had that same time. Right. I didn't have to do anything. He took care of everything. And, you know, I didn't, I had no idea when he passed away because it was 34 days in the hospital and then he passed away. Yeah. And I, he was on a ventilator at day 14. Yeah. And I couldn't ask him Good anything. Doctor. You know, I, I, and he did the bills. He yeah. just, he just, took care of Kim, you know, yeah. and it, it was the hardest thing ever. So if I have one tip, if I can start, yeah. it's, you know, know your passwords, know how to get it to your, your husband's computers, <laughs> for sure. I mean, because it is a real thing. And when they're gone, nobody knows them but them, you okay. know, and I, I, I can't tell you the countless hours that I sat at my kitchen island yeah. on the phone and, and digging and just trying to find answers. Things. So, it's a you know I wrote that I, I guess a, at the beginning I I journal some too sure. and I made yeah. some notes about some things where I was at that time sure sure and so I wrote down feelings or, or how I actually felt anxiety yeah. no your anxiety every situation that you don't know the immediate answer to yeah. or what to do you get extremely anxious yeah. or I did oh, yeah. Fear. Mm, mm. I have never lived alone. I went from my parents' home to me our too. home. And this has been one of the hardest things for me. And my husband, I, I've had some health issues and my husband was an, actually an RN. And he was very uh, in tune to my health. Mm. He kept up with everything. <laughs> he knew everything about my health. He was on top of it. And when I lost him, I lost that support. Right. Yeah. So I had the fear of being sick without oh, absolutely. him. Yes. Confused. I was so confused that I think people have written how your grief you go through certain tips mm -hmm. tip of certain step. Yeah. And confusion is one of them. Yes. And fall. But you don't go like in the fall. No, yeah, it doesn't. It. And it but, can come out yeah, and he comes back. I was unable to make decisions. Right. My son would probably, and my daughter would agree with that. For sure. <laughs> so I'd have to call and say, do you think I should do this, or should I do that, or should I do this? Yeah. Um, and I felt like I was being pushed down. I felt like I was being mm -hmm. captive. I was mm. just, just at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Somebody was holding me back. And of course, there was the loneliness. And you were totally, totally lost. Yeah. Then I wrote down, what did I need? 
thinks that, or, or excuse me, what did I lose? Mm -hmm. What did you lose when you lost your husband? Mm -hmm. Because when you are on this journey, you realize all the things that your husband did mm -hmm. that you might not even know that he did, right? Well, of course, he was my partner, confident lover, lost his income. Mm -hmm. right. And that's one of the things that mm -hmm. You need to prepare for. Oh, oh, oh. Talk about that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that is an immediate thing. That's right. Right. They don't, yeah. the, your bills don't stop. No, coming no they, your bills do not no. stop. No. And my husband was on Social Security. That stopped immediately. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, and I had to go through a process to be able to gain access to some retirement that I had. Mm -hmm. entitled to, but that took some time. Yeah. So I was very fortunate as where we were and financially paid off most of our bills. We were both retired and had plans for that, but I'm sure it was a different journey for you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And people don't, most people don't ex ex uh, expect that or think about that because when yet they're ill or pass away, Finances are nothing that you think about. No, that's not even not. important. That's not. And my son was 56. And, you know, it's funny, we, we would talk about, if anything ever happened to you, I would never get married again, or things like that. But in your mind, you, you never think, this is going to be my life. I'm going to be a widow at 55 right. years old. And, you know, it's just, um, it, it, it's just tough. And you don't, you know, we, we didn't even have a will. You know, so I, I mean, I, we, I, I was prepared for absolutely nothing. You didn't have one either? No, ma'am. No, I'm, 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 because I couldn't, I thought, well, we're going right. to live until Jesus her. comes That's back. right. That's right. You nothing has ever happened to, to You us. don't plan to die. Yeah. No. You plan it, to live. This journey right? is not one that you expected to go on. It is not. Absolutely. It is not. And nothing, I think, you know, I've always wondered, you know, what's, what is harder? Is it harder to, you know, take care of someone who had a long illness? Does that prepare you more or yeah. sudden, yeah. you know? And mine, you know, was closer to sudden than a long illness. Um, but 34 days is pretty sudden. Well, my husband went in for open heart surgery and he had had COVID earlier. Yeah. Um, and they discovered issues with his heart and the actual surgery, the last time I spoke with him was when he went in for the surgery. The surgery itself went beautifully, but his body didn't recover from ECMO oh, and his no. liver and yeah. his uh, yeah. uh, kidney started to fail. Mm -hmm. And it was a week. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And that he was, and he was in, went into a coma. He was on a ventilator for a short time. Yeah. But I will tell you little tidbits we've talked about how God works. He was at a at a hospital and that particular hospital didn't have a neurosurgeon and he had had a stroke too. And they were afraid they wanted to transfer him because they wanted a neurosurgeon available in case they needed to go in and relieve the pressure. Well, the hospital they recommended that he was transferred to was where my daughter was working. Oh, wow. My daughter is a nurse practitioner. Oh, wow. That's a blessing. And he was transferred to that hospital, and she was there for him as soon as he arrived. Mm. And they showed us unbelievable professional courtesy. You're going to find out that you are going to meet some unbelievable oh, people so. on this journey, too. <laughs> Caregivers, the most compassionate. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be totally alone. You may feel alone, right. but you're not going to be alone. You're not. You're not. And I will tell you that that's um, in that hospital room. It is probably the closest that I've ever faced Jesus. Yes. I would play my worship music mm -hmm. and just pray and, you know, and I, when after Timo died, I missed that. I missed that time with Jesus. But it's like, now you got to get things in order. Now you got to go back to work. And, you know, I feel like 
even though he, he died, that was such a precious time for me to be with the Lord. You know? Mm -hmm. See, there was a, a, a week in there because the COVID restrictions had not lifted. So since I couldn't, I, I couldn't get to it. I'm so thankful that I, um, I could. I couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. And, and um, then during that time, he moved into intensive care. Right. And uh, it was two more weeks and then they lifted some of it so that I could at least get in there and not look through the glass. Right. So if you went through that or if you're going, oh, I understand. Because now that, now that's where I got frustrated. And I get mad. Well, that's and another thing that happens happened is frustration. I, I couldn't get mad at the staff because, see, I had just retired during the COVID thing. Oh, so wow. I knew we had yes. mask up, gowns up, the whole nine yards. So, and I've seen people stand out the windows of, of my patient and they're waving at mom oh. and dad oh. and crying. Yeah. And I think, man, I, I can't, yeah, I couldn't hardly stand much yeah. of that, you know, but you do, it is some marvelous people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That you meet some marvelous, marvelous people. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're merciful yeah. as, mer as much as they can, but, you know. Didn't uh, you meet I did. Um, oh, yeah. I had more people come, people I didn't even know, ministers would come and they'd, they'd sit down and say, what, what are you in here for? You know, and they'd start praying for me. Oh, oh absolutely. Um, I don't remember her name. Um, she was sitting in the floor crying one day uh, in, in the hospital floor at the hospital. And I had seen her the day before. And um, I just went up to her and I said, um, well, she, you know, she pulled me, if I'll get this right, she pulled me and she said, I know you. And I said, you do? And I told her my name and, um, and, and, and I, I, I did not know who she was. But anyway, she was telling me that her dad was in the hospital and that they didn't know if he was going to make it. And, um, and again, it's just so cool how in the midst of your valley that the Lord uses you. And so mm -hmm. he allowed me to pray for her, you know. In the middle of your valley. The, yeah. Hello, I got blessed by that. You know, it was, it was not just, you know, and when I tell the story, I always say, all glory to God, not to, not to me. Because I had the privilege to pray with her during that during that time, and that was real special. Because we knew that you needed to be lifted. Yeah. Because that had to be so dark. Right. right. You needed some mm -hmm. light. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it's a hard, mm -hmm. hard place to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, my husband was a registered nurse, had been a registered nurse for over 40 years. And he was a very compassionate man. I mean, that was definitely his calling. And he worked in the OR prior to his, the last place he worked, prior to his retirement. And at this particular hospital, I had a conversation with one of the physician's assistants about I didn't want them to talk negative in front of him. I didn't oh, yeah. want, I wanted them to see him as a person, mm -hmm. not a patient. Right. Right. And I said, you know, my husband, you know, was in the medical field and he said, I knew, I knew him. Uh, yeah. And one of the doctors and the PA, my husband had even actually taught that PA how to scrub into surgery. Oh my goodness. And one of the doc trauma doctors, had worked at UAB with him. That is so, so you know, God placed those people there Absolutely. to take care of him. Absolutely. You know, they saw him differently than they may have had before. Yeah. And Not what? that they, you know, didn't give him good right. care, but, you know, then they realized, you know, that that's somebody I knew that I'm making these decisions for. And when they're laying there in the bed, I mean, if you, could see the pictures, or if you knew how he looked in the hospital, oh. I wanted to go, this is not my husband. Right. I wanted to put a picture I of him at an picture. Auburn football game with our granddaughter, you know, and go, <laughs> this is who you're caring for. Right. You know, he was alive and vibrant and full of life, and, you know, yeah. that's not who he is. Yeah. So right. please take care, but please see him as a husband and a father that's and right. a grandfather. Yes. You know? If there's a nurse watching, Take, listen to, to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they, are, they are human beings. Absolutely. Not just a patient. That's right.
But you know, one of the, I'm also the last part of things that I had made note that the family has. <laughs> okay, I mean, I've, you know, but a couple other things that I lost was the unconditional acceptance and unconditional love of a person. Right. I do know God is, loves me unconditionally and accepts me the way I am. But my husband did too. Yes. And I miss that. You know, I shared with you earlier that my husband <clears throat> told me he loved me every day. And he told me I was pretty or beautiful every day. And I miss that. Tell them, tell them what we just discussed before we went on the air about hugging. Yes. I miss that. In fact, what a list of what <laughs> I needed. Here's my list of what I needed. There you go. And I had that on here. <laughs> so the physical, listen, the physical you know there are widows, if, and if they will allow you, because everybody don't want to be hugged, but I tell my children, look, hug me, put the squeeze on me. Don't just <laughs> pat me, me, put the squeeze on me. And tell me how beautiful I am, no matter if I look like a hag. <laughs> <laughs> because you miss that, don't you? You do miss that. Terribly. You miss yeah. it. Yeah. I would yeah. answer the phone, and he would say, hey, beautiful. Yes. Oh, you know, yeah. you do. Yes. Like, yeah. you, you probably take a little for granted. Right. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah. But then when they're gone and you don't hear that anymore, it's yeah. like, wow. Oh, now, I'm gonna, can I say this right here, Jay? Absolutely. That is why. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> That's how I started mirror work. I got a new mirror. We all want one now. Listen, yeah, it's got lights on it. You blow her. Where'd you do this? Costco. Costco. <laughs> but listen, uh, remember, y'all, if y'all hadn't watched, Karen knows what episode it is. Talk to yourself and tell yourself, I love you. I dare you to do it. If you haven't done it, it was the last something's episode. wrong. Yes, yes. it was. Yeah. Tell yourself at least ten times, and I made a. I found five more mirrors in the closet since so I moved. More I moved in March. <laughs> and so the other day I found five. You yeah. have one in every no, room. I, I yeah. got, oh, I got them now. She wants to pass by. Absolutely, that's awesome. Because, that's because okay. it's okay to love yourself. It's okay, yeah. it's okay. and it's all right for you to tell yourself because this is the only body you get here now. Nobody hadn't told you. You get one per this life. You know, and then, and you know it's okay to mess up too. Oh. And it's okay to step on some people's toes. Oh, and okay. it's, it's okay. And you're going to do that. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be times when you're probably going to say the wrong thing <laughs> because you haven't thought it through like you normally would have. Yeah. Um, because you're just not, you are not the person that you were the day he died. Absolutely. And I have discovered Absolutely. that I am trying to live, this is my hurdle now, I'm trying to live the life that I had as his wife. And I don't have that life anymore. Mm -hmm. no. And so now the hurdle is making a new life for myself. That's right. right. I moved. I think we all discussed yeah. that. We've yeah. all yeah. moved. They, they, they didn't hear the oh, story. Okay, so I, I downsized. All three of and them I moved. moved. Yes, yes, three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that makes so much sense. Oh, they sit near to the neighbor. Yeah. 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 So that, so that change, you need to change. Don't do it immediately. Don't we'll do it discuss it. that. But right. you'll so know. You, you will know when it is time. Absolutely. Uh, so many people ask you. That's right. Well, how do you know? How do you know when to you just pack up their clothes or sell the house or sell the car? And a lot of things. A lot of things you have to do. You know. Quickly, for financial reasons, for sure. one thing, right? Jumbo just had bought a new sports car, but that was one of the first things I had to do mm -hmm. was to sell his car because uh -huh. me on my single income, I couldn't pay for okay. his car and my car, and so um, that was that. That was probably the first thing of his that I had to let go. And it was hard. It was a car, but it was his, and I would think things like, "Oh, that's the ceremony is the last place his little hands were," and you know, <laughs> you mean. think crazy things. You do. <laughs> Being, you know, going through grief, whether you lost your mom or your husband or whoever, it is a real thing. Widow fog is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And you just, you I've know, like you talked about earlier, you don't have decision-making skills. You no. just don't have reasoning mm -hmm. skills. And mm -hmm. I would go to work and get just everything that I could muster up, every single thing. 
but I had nothing left when I got home. Nothing left. We had a boat that we had purchased the summer before, and it was my boat. Mm -hmm. I had my, <laughs> my nickname up, he called me Sunshine, and the boat was named Miss Sunshine. I love that. I love um, that. But I had a, a group praying with me about being able to sell that boat mm -hmm. because it was financially starting to have an impact on me, sure. and obviously right. I didn't enjoy it. And, right. You know, it's not just the payment, it's the sure. storage and the insurance right. and you have gas. And, and so I had, I had people praying that I would sell that boat. Yeah. And I actually sold it to another Auburn fan. Right. So, <laughs> I love it. That was important. <laughs> And they it's the little details of that. It is. It is. They also told me that they were going to leave the Miss Sunshine on the boat. Oh, so, okay. you know, oh, it, it's the little things like that. And there's another, those were two people that I have met that have actually kept up with me and oh. checked on me and even taken me for a ride on that boat that oh, I sold to them. Oh, that, that was so special. Right, it was. Oh. Very much so. So, so you. Your life has changed, and you are on a journey that only you can make. Absolutely. Yeah. And there will be people in and out of this journey with you. Yeah. There will be people that you might not want to take this journey with. You might realize, because that's the other thing. Your social life is going to change. Yep. From now. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't it? Didn't your oh, social life change? It did. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But I'm so thankful, so thankful. I'm like Karen. I, I come from a family that had six kids, and um, actually lived with my brother um, and his wife, Anna. Oh, 
Don't, don't, don't leave out that. I, I am going to share this little thing that I read. It's just one sentence, but it's, it is a grief shared is a burden lightened. So if you share, especially with someone else that may be going through this journey, it does help. It does help. It does. Yeah. Say so um, please. A She's grief right. shared is a burden light. And then when you do share, it, it, it's exactly what you said. It, and whether you're sharing and you're crying and you're having a bad day, there's just something about, you know, even if, you know, whoever you're, whoever you're talking to, it's such a release. And and I don't know about y'all, and I, but I'm sure you feel the same way. I love to talk about Jimbo. Even when I went back to work, I told my staff, I said, please don't tiptoe around his name. I said, I would oh, love to talk about it. Right. And if you want to talk to me about him, I said, please talk to me about him. And I think people don't do that because they think, ooh, if I say his name, it's going to upset her. Yeah. You know? But you told us that like immediately. I did. We had, we're best friends from high school. We met when we were 14, I guess. Yeah, 14 yeah. years old. And we did a Bible study after Jimbo had passed because all of us, this group of friends, Kim, Patty, Kim, um, <laughs> we, wanted to, we wanted to get together and make sure she was going to be okay. And I do believe I'm not experiencing this, but from this side of the table, when you have friends or family that are hurting, you don't know what to do. You don't no. know what to say. I mean, I know that I've oh, lost my mother, my but there is that, that thing of, well, what's the right and appropriate right. time? And Kim was so good about, let's talk about it. Well, let's <laughs> talk about what happened. So we would go through what happened in high school. We'd pull out pictures. And... All of us on the outside are like, oh, this is going to make it awkward or uncomfortable. It's the no. total opposite. And I know that now that I lost my mom because the more, no. when I meet somebody, when you meet somebody that has known that person, right. Right. it is the happiest. Oh, let's talk about my mama. That's right. You know, or That's your right. husband. Right. You right. Right. To. Right. So all of you out there, if you do have friends going through this, or I'm speaking from our, this side of the table, do reach out and do talk about it and do bring it up or do remember something. And, and, and share it with them. Don't just keep it to yourself. Absolutely. And if you don't, know, if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. You just need to listen. Yeah. Or send yeah. a text yeah. and just say, pray for Thinking you. About Thinking you. about you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've sent texts that say, you don't even have to respond. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I just, I love you and I'm thinking about you. I do think there is one thing we need to prepare uh, or, or give a tip about. And that's going to the grocery store. <laughs> the first time I went to the grocery <laughs> store, after my husband died was very traumatic to me really? because you've gone for from mm. buying groceries for two people yeah. cooking for two people preparing food buying his favorite things making his favorite food yeah to buy for one person yeah. and you don't you don't cook for one you person don't, don't ex- who would have thought going to the grocery store would be a traumatic experience? Yeah. Now, Jimbo always went to, to the grocery store. Yes. I never grocery shop, so I can't really relate to Kim that. Oh, well, okay. Kim was a pet woman. <laughs> Thank goodness. But we love you. <laughs> but, I mean, that was just yeah, I, going from absolutely. taking care of yeah, I cooking saw, for two, preparing yeah. food for two. I was yeah. 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 just me. Yeah. And he, he loved peace tea. These tall cans of peace tea. <laughs> Loved them. And to see those on the shelf, you know, I was like, oh, the triggers that happen. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's mm-hmm. just, it, you know, it, any any trigger can happen anywhere. It it can can happen right at any time. time. Yep. Music does it. Music you know, is me too. Can, can I ask? Yeah, because I, I, I want to make sure. Are you oh. covering your points? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, well, it don't matter. I was going to ask <laughs> oh. y'all, what did you do about when you went to bed? You got a tip for bed. Well, I usually put a pillow. And the way my husband worked sometimes, we wouldn't always sleep in the same bed. Yeah. So, um, but I put a pillow right up against me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Like the bottom one, the long ones? Right. Okay. No, it's just a regular, just a okay. regular pillow. Okay. And sometimes I'll talk to that pillow. Okay. Do you do that? Hey, okay. Yes, I might pat it. I might I'll tell it I love it. 
you know, I mean, that yep. just sounds totally crazy. It and people will think you're But is it comfort? Was it comforting or is it comforting? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I'm all about comfort. I have trouble. I sleep, I have trouble sleeping. Okay. Because um, I told you I, I never lived alone. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, has it has been mm -hmm. one of the worst of you. Yeah. And moving from the home where I, where we had lived for thirty two years, mm -hmm. to this new home that I'm in, mm -hmm. in which he never lived in, mm -hmm. yeah. it is. I have adjusted a little better to that. Yeah, me too. And I have a ritual I go through, you know, checking every door. Mm -hmm. How long you know, have you been in the new house? Just since February. Okay. Okay. Just been four or five months. Yeah. Y'all are literally the same thing. Yeah. So I'm looking around like this. <laughs> You've been in your house a year? Um, so I, we bought our house in August of 21. Jimmy passed away in February of 21. But he worked a job where he was gone three weeks at a time and then home for three weeks. So I... And, and I, I think it was just the Lord preparing me to be by myself with Jimbo being gone. Okay. So I really, you know, to answer your question, I really, I mean, you never want to sleep by yourself. But I think I didn't have a harder time because I got used to it. Okay. But, um, you know, you miss things that, that I miss or, you know, that arm over, you, you know, at night. Or, you know, the kiss goodbye. It's just that it is always, and I say it all the time, it's just the small things that you miss. You know, yeah, it's not like, yeah. yeah. I don't miss the snoring. <laughs> <laughs> so I even miss that. <laughs> How do y'all handle holidays? Well, Christmas, we, our anniversary is December the 27th. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And both of my children's <laughs> anniversaries are in December, yeah. too. Um, of course, just Christmas, and then his birthday is in December. You're like me. So oh, December is a very hard, but it's also that was our season. That was our time. Sure. And um, sure. I've tried to surround myself and do the same thing. I, I you know, timing. God never does anything to our timing, never. <laughs> so I put my house up for sale in September and we anticipated that it would sell quickly. Well, it didn't because the, the uh, real estate market I'm a real estate slowed estate. down to tell me what happened. <laughs> so I prayed and kind of had to knees almost every night praying that Lord God would stop. work this where it would be okay. Well, obviously, he wanted me to have one last Christmas in that home oh. because it sold like two days after Christmas. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. And um, okay. so, you know, the timing, what I was looking for it to be wasn't the time. Right. right. And so um, we, we have done pretty much the same things that we have done previously. But I don't know, like the first year of Thanksgiving, the year I usually always had Thanksgiving, but my son and daughter-in-law hosted that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. yeah and that first year, I, um, the first Thanksgiving, that was the first one that had never been at my house. Right. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And the ironic thing is that I was invited to my ex-husband, his wife invited me to her. Wow. wow. <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I did go. Oh, yeah. I had a, I had a, gosh, I had a marvelous time. And my, my family was there and I thought, wow, what am I doing here? I my daughter-in-law's mother has included me Absolutely. in several That's things. Yeah. And so it also allows me to see you know, they have commitments to other family members too. You know, we have to share. Sure, sure. But it allows me to celebrate those things with them. Absolutely. And yes. yeah. 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 With our what do you do? So huh, for me, uh, again, I have a big family. But the first I guess the first Christmas it it was hard and I think it's just you want to do the same things but it's not the same. You know, you have, you're missing your person. Um, 
you know, and then and then you think, well, maybe we should start new traditions. Well, what does yeah. that look like? Yeah. It's easier you know, said than done. Easier your said than done. Trying, yeah. And I, you know, just coming from a big family, you know, they all have their things, you know, now because we all have kids and grandkids, and so everybody kind of goes their separate ways. Um, and so, you know, it's hard. And, and, and for me, more than holidays are just, you know, occasions like, you know, it's Mother's Day. That's even hard because Jim and I love to celebrate, celebrate me big. So it's Mother's Day, my birthday, or Father's Day, his birthday, and then our anniversary. So everything comes in clusters. So those are hard. But, um, you know, to answer your question, surround yourself with loved ones. Um, you know, that that's the oxygen does when you focus on that because it brings a peace into the whole body. Yes, it does. And I said, well, I thought all these times, I thought all these years I was breathing. And he said, you've been running, just running like a gerbil on a gerbil wheel. And I said, he said, I want you just to stop. And I said, okay, it's all right to stop. Because see, you're um, you're on that thing and you're you're going, and you're thinking, well, I got to get there, I got to get there, I got to do this, got you know, and that night is when I learned how to be by myself, mm -hmm. awake, and I was awake, and I thought, well, and I told myself, well, this is not bad at all, <laughs> you know, and it's, and I had a dim light on, I didn't have all the bright lights on, and I felt when I started breathing, it was okay because I felt peace come over me. And it was peaceful for my body. That's the first night I really went in there with feet. Wow. I went to sleep. What's yeah. your What's your tip about bedtime? Oh, now what I do is because I've got a lot going on with my children. They're grown. All mine's grown too. 
And but I had I found the other night I told I think I told Karen I said I was praying for one of my sons and and I woke up like at midnight. I started praying I, for him and I said, Well Lord, I went out on you. I said everybody I'm sorry, yeah. but I said I just I, I went to sleep in mid sentence or whatever. Yeah. And um, I woke up and used the restroom and then I thought well, I'll start doing it again. It worked good tonight that time, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it every time. You know, so that's what I've been doing right now. Like, yes, I still yes, pray. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, well, Lord, I, you know, um, yeah. I mean, and like I said, I woke up at midnight. And I thought, oh my God. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I just went. I went. I just. I. Stuck, I just shut up. You know. <laughs> so what about today? What do you? What have you done since their passing? Have you found? Are you searching for purpose? Do you look for purpose? Is there something right now? Oh, I'm searching. My my purpose is because the Lord had after you had spoke me spoke with me about getting involved here because I felt led to help you. So see, I focus on Mondays because she asked me about Mandy's Mondays motivation. Mandy has a Monday motivation. If you ever want to be encouraged on Mondays. Mamie does a one-minute little pick I can't you up. go over 50 seconds because Charity said no. <laughs> <laughs> it, for the first, it was like five minutes, so we had to. But it's okay. You're working. You're doing yeah, great. She's doing great, and they are you amazing. Know, and it's funny because I told Karen, I said, I, c I cannot believe I'm doing this. Well, she's got me to do stuff like this right here. Right TikTok. Now. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't even know. If it wasn't for the gurus, Charity and Shannon, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they do all that. They tell us what to do. Okay. But um, I find my purpose, because see, he asked me to help you. So, and in that, I find purpose because I, you love to be, um, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, you love to feel like you're needed. Oh, my goodness, yes. yes. There is a place for you. Um, I have I, I, I found I've been visiting a new church now for two months, and um, it, it's purpose there too, you know. So because I found myself because I get mad at my children because I think way back I don't do it now. Um, I think y'all aren't paying enough attention to me. Mm -hmm. Well, my God, they were doing everything they could. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And then the, I had an epiphany. I got to share this. Yeah. And then I'll show you. A lady at a, I was visiting another church, and she walked up and she said, I wanted to invite you to our sample spree. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, you know I'm 70 years old. <laughs> she said, it's a sample spree for like 60 and older. And I thought, and I looked at her, and she kept talking. I said, hold, hold up just a moment. <laughs> Hang on. I'm still back here on the scene. <laughs> I bet that word didn't come in your head. Oh, no. no. Yeah. And I said, I'm, I'm single. I couldn't hardly get it out of my mouth. Stop and I don't have a problem talking. <laughs> <laughs> but that does, she, that, that she don't know. She just, it was a lightning wow. bolt come oh, through yeah. the brain. So you look from widow to single, that has to be a big yeah. Big step. And I thought, I never thought about being single at 70. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I went home and I drove all the way home and I said, Lord, is, is, what, what is this? <laughs> you know, and I, I'm talking out loud in the car by myself. <laughs> and I said, okay, oh, I'm in another category now. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, you know, because you go through different, like yeah. you said about the stages, and I thought, I'm single. Okay. I'm single. What, what, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. You know, and I, I and I thought, okay. Well, it, that's not was not that was not planned. Mm -hmm. That was not my plan. Okay. But when she said that, it was another uh, cut in there. It, yeah. uh, not a not a. I'm not talking about her hurt my feelings. I'm talking about right. it was another cut in the mind. Right. Yeah. Uh, clear, clearing out. Yeah. 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 And I thought, okay, I'm single now. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, that even changed, it changed how I run the house. It, it, I mean, you tell me. Yeah. I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not washing them clothes today. 
Yeah. I got plenty for tomorrow, so I'll do it tomorrow. You're the boss of your house. That's right. And all of a sudden, it, yeah, I thought, wow, that's quite liberating. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to cook today. Yeah. I don't yeah. have to cook today. Yeah. Uh, it's Chick okay. Chick-fil-A sounds good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. You know. Yeah. But, yeah, that was, you know, the the deal when I went with, when I met you, mm -hmm. um, Sherry, you know, and uh, Wendy and everybody mm -hmm. had encouraged me. And I thought, because I had never been like in, in a, uh, a, a, a all ladies. What was it? Uh, we went on a women's retreat to a church that neither of us attended. Yeah. But, <laughs> but my, it's about people church, that we both love. The, fam yeah. the church is real close to me. We were the new ones and yeah. didn't know each other at all. I mean, yeah. the only ones that didn't Put know each other. Put me in the back seat with her. I knew the I knew there's something so special okay. about her. Yeah. But as far as purpose. She's pretty special. Absolutely. <laughs> but that Jesus but, is special. And I'm sure there's more to come. Uh, but it's a day by day and uh, as he opens up things, I'll I'll step through them. Okay. No. What about you? I realize that I made a mistake. One of the mistakes I made. You know, I'm not the only person grieving. Mm. Oh, and I oh. have seen myself be gotcha. so overwhelmed with my grief mm -hmm. that unfortunately, I probably didn't Me too. give my mm -hmm. children what yeah. they needed because yeah. they lost their yeah. father. Yeah. You know? yeah. Went the and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I regret that. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I have. But there's still time. Regret. There, there is. Sure. There. Oh, sure. 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 But, you know, they hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. And not just and friends, you know. I mean, so I've been so well, wrapped up in myself and his brother, and that I don't. So when you're empty, I have to appreciate it's hard to feel yeah. other people. It is. You know right. what I mean? When it you're is. empty, mm -hmm. yeah, it's hard to do that. Well, no, if so I can it. help someone else realize that there are other people grieving for that same I mean, person that you love, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that's yeah. something that you need to. Pay attention. Pay attention. Absolutely. But I also think we don't have the wherewithal to, to no. think about that at that moment because we're so heavy grieved ourselves that we kind of do look inward mm -hmm. because we yeah. don't know. We this is you know this is so hard and it's heartbreaking and you think oh my gosh you know how am I, how am I going to get through this and it doesn't mean that we don't love our children because we oh, love sure. them more than anybody right. in the world and sure. we care how they feel and we want to talk to them. So I hope if my kids are watching that they get it. And I, I, I know they do. I know what do you think yeah. now that you can, now that you're where you are, because yeah. it's obviously a journey. This is right. not a, this is a oh, marathon. Right. This is a never, and the girl who isn't with us tonight actually said this to me whenever we were talking about her being on the show. So I'm from the show, but I'm not over it. And I said to her, that's the point. I don't think you'd never be over it. Nobody's yeah. going to, I mean, Man, Nobody's going to get over this. Mm -hmm. You're going to change in life, and the, and the path and the road might be different, and you might take different ones, like going from widow to single, or <laughs> from a house with, with your brother to maybe by yourself, or from the house that used to be. That's better yeah. than widow. Yeah. <laughs> it is better than widow. Uh -huh. Single is better than widow. Yeah. 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 You really well, don't like that. About that but I thought it doesn't define me. No, no. And, no. and it does not define me. Any of it. Right. It is. But you know, that's the. That is another thing that you have to anticipate. You know, if you go somewhere and you've got to complete uh, paperwork oh God, yes. and you have to mark. Oh, your yeah, that's, that's, that's right. It's, you're not, that's you're not another traumatic. And who is your oh, contact wow. person? And, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was my husband yes. and now it's yeah. my, someone yeah. else, my your son or your daughter. Or whoever. I know. It's, so, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, this is something like going to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just a little something, but oh, I gotta walk, mark that widow box, oh, yeah. and I have to take his name off. That's, that's right. Yeah. That or your beneficiary. Or beneficiary. Yeah. That, that is still just hurt. Yeah. It does hurt. Let me let me say this because uh, I don't want us to run out of time. Yes. The other thing, um, hold on, just let me find my notes. I learned the hard way. Uh, I don't. I am very very careful. And I don't, I like, I, I like the word careful, but for right now I'm going to use careful. Um, I'm careful about what I watch on TV before I go to bed. 
or, or what yeah. I watch on the Facebook. Oh, yeah. If it's real <laughs> negative, if it's negative, I found, honey, I've been, hey, I've been in Israel fighting with the rest of them, and I thought, <laughs> listen, I thought, listen, I'm gonna pray for Jerusalem, I pray for Jerusalem, I pray for Israel, but the next thing I know, I'm over there, and, and I'm thinking, oh, dear God. And so I thought, don't stop that. Yes. Stop it. Yes. If it's her, if it's yes. not, if I, I, you don't need to be an Israel right now. But I mean, my, in, you know, when you go to sleep, you're, you're reliving whatever you put in. So now, now I look for stuff, especially if it's babies, if it's lambs. I don't want to watch it. No, no, no. Nothing scary. I don't want to watch it. No, no, no. No, no. Because I'm going to tell you something about our minds. Oh, yeah. Our minds are marvelous. They are powerful. I have a marvelous mind. Yes. You told us. I, well, we do. Well, you we do too. Yes. And right. so, and she's, she don't forget nothing. <laughs> I mean, and when I when I'm in there and I'm living, I'm thinking, oh, tomorrow night we're gonna watch something happy or laugh. I'm gonna watch Benji. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm going. People going, may not know Benji. It was a dog. It was a dog. <laughs> right. That's a lot. Couple of years ago, it, it ends good. <laughs> yes. Benji wins. He oh, wins. Yes. Hey, it's um, still singing. Well, no, Daisy it. watches it. I got a labrador that like watches it too. But no, no, no. Now, if I and I look, I'm gonna be honest. I look for happy people. Yeah. I look for happy people. Mm -hmm. If if uh, I mean, unless I really have a feeling to to be around them, I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I want to be around happy. Um, because I, 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 I just, that's just what I found right now. I try to laugh yeah. um, because it, well, first of all, it releases endorphins. That's right. You know. You definitely make us feel better, though. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I, I found something the other night, and I, I laughed, I, I listened to it like 15 times, and I thought, <laughs> I laughed so hard till I cried, and I thought, I've got to quit watching this, but I thought, it's time to go to bed. Now, there is something you need to share with them about laughter. She showed this me, which I think will help y'all. Oh. Okay. Whenever you're fighting the enemy, and he does get in our heads before we go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's usually a good time, quiet time. She literally was like, when that starts happening, I want you to stop, and I want you to start laughing out loud. And then she actually do the laugh. Tell him to laugh. Well, you first of all, that it was a it was like a it was a terror T E R R O R at night. Mm -hmm. Well, what if this happened? Well, what if that ha the videos start? I call them videos in your mind. <laughs> when the videos stop, the best way to stop it is I pull the covers up and I went, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I'm going, because I, now remember, I'm by myself. There's nobody there. So the labradoodle's not there. And uh, I said, ha, ha, ha. I went, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> then I threw the cover down. I said, ah! <laughs> That'll never happen. And then I thought, and I told God out loud, I said, Thank you, I needed that. But we all need that. And this, what you do, what I have found is I do whatever it takes to, to break it. Yeah. Because the works. purpose is to get you up. This is why we're doing we're this. Back here, to get yeah. you up and out. The Bible said he brought me up and out of a horrible pit. If we can get you up, we can just get you up, you can come on out. And if you haven't gotten that tonight, I don't know where you would get it from. This has been an incredible show. They are absolutely amazing. The fact that you have shared from your heart the tears, the joy, the laughter, giving us so many tips that I know now in the future things to look that I would have never without you telling your story. Oh, we have all benefited. And you can't see everybody in this room, but there's a lot of people over here. Yeah. And we all pick something up from this. And I'm so grateful. And my sister Sandy's here. <laughs> she's over there, you can't see her, but she's real pretty. And, <laughs> and I am. I'm so thankful and honored. And Absolutely. well and, and I'm gonna end the show with something that might something that happened today. We said that Izzy wasn't here earlier, and Izzy is someone that I met Thursday night. I literally met mm -hmm. the girl who was going to be on the show Thursday night. Mm -hmm. We had a Fourth of July celebration. She came to the Fourth of July in Clear. We had a table, yeah. and Izzy came up and she. Um, okay, um, I'm sorry. I'm talking to one of the scenes. Izzy came up and I saw her coming with her little boy, 
and it was instant. She was someone that, you know, those, meet those people and you're like, me and her, we're gonna meet, and this is gonna be a conversation. And she walked up with the table, we have shirts for sale now, we're so pumped about her shirts, and she was all excited about the shirts, and bought a shirt, and I started telling her about the show, and how all the different subjects that we had covered, and how this next week, that we were doing one on widows. And I said, you know, we're doing one on widows, and we really like multi-generational. I want everybody in the audience to see this show, and see someone that they could reflect yeah, on, and where they're at. Yeah. And that's what we've done every week, and I said, and you know, on the one coming up, we have the women of all the ages, we don't have a younger woman. And then that's not something you're just gonna be like, okay, anybody wanna talk about your husband? I mean, that's just not yeah. something you advertise for and how do you even have that conversation? Yeah. But I'm talking to Izzy and she starts tearing up and I, and she says, you're looking for me. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I literally, me, we all sort of, it was like, I just tears sort of fall my eyes and hers and she said, I'm not over it, which is what I was telling you, I said, I'm not over it. She said, I'm 30 and he passed away when I was 26. So that's how Izzy and I met. And we're all excited about the show, which I'm like so pumped that she's gonna come on the show. And then she kept, <laughs> sends a message today, and I'm sharing this because Izzy said I could share this. I would never in a million years do that because I respect his privacy, but this is something I have to share, and she wanted me to share it with all of you. I wanted to wait to the end because God had a mission tonight, and it was your story. But now it's going to turn a little bit, and it is going to come a little bit about, well, a lot about Izzy. Izzy called us, called me, and, well, she texted me, and she said, this morning, she said, my son's been throwing up for a couple weeks. We were taken to the doctor. They did. He sent to the ER today. Then they sent him to Children's. Right now, Izzy at the Children's Hospital, and they have found a brain tumor. Oh, I, I, Ivan is his name. She wanted me to share the story. She wanted me to tell all of you. And that is what this is about. We, we thought it was going to be this show. We thought she's come on the show to help other people. But Izzy needs us today. And this story, she's in the hospital, so she has heard your story. So what you said is going to help Izzy with the widow part of her life. But now the sisterhood is going to join together I want you to write Izzy's name down. I want you to write his Ivan's name down. And I want you to pray for them daily. I'm gonna go see them tomorrow, but right now, in this moment, we're gonna go from widows to a mother who is fear, has the things that we have talked about, and we're gonna pray for her on air. We That's want right. you to join us. We're gonna yes. join hands yes. and do this in this moment. We are so grateful for every one of your stories. And Sandy, come, on, Sandy. come join us. But we want we're going to join hands and we're going to pray for Izzy. And we want you to join with us. Well, she wanted them to pray. She and she actually said, she tell the viewers, because now I know that we are a sisterhood. We are putting a hedge around Izzy, around Ivan, in that hospital right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for him and we want you to join us. So Jesus, right now we come to you and we are so grateful for this evening. We are also grateful for divine meetings and divine intervention and we know that Izzy was meant to walk into our path and that she is not alone in this moment and that right now the angels are in that hospital room with them that Ivan is feeling your presence and she is feeling your presence and we are just so grateful that you are sending the angels out you are guiding the doctor's hands you are here in this moment not only with these widows who have been so great to share their stories but with Izzy in the moments that she's dealing with, the fear and the anxiety. I pray calm over that room, God. I pray your presence in that moment, in the next 24 to 48 hours, that those doctors find a clear path, a clear way. Let them be yeah. healed. Yeah. You died on the cross for our sins, but also for the healing power that we have here today on this earth, God. And again, we just thank you so much for letting Izzy become part of the sisterhood, God. We are so grateful for her. And we ask you to be with her every second of every day, even if we can't be there to hug her in person. We know that your comfort will be with her, Lord. And God, again, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for these moments. And we thank you for this sisterhood that is living out the purpose that you set for it, which is to make sure that no woman feels alone, no matter what journey that they're walking through, God. That you are always with us, and you are always in the details. And we are so grateful, beyond grateful, for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray.
and you made it. Thank you. So that is how we're ending this show. And we would again love to, you to continue to keep Izzy and him in your prayers. We will keep you updated. We love you so much. Yeah. We are so grateful for this sisterhood. Yeah. And we will have y'all. We'll see you next week. Bye.